Who is this super YouTuber? Is it Paul, the Joy Toy Collector? Andy, the Newcastle United fan? Jamie, the Gobot hater? Alexis, the salesman? Rohan, the man with the plan and the wall of fame? Might just be... Rohan's Corner, Super Transformers guy. Rohan's Corner, poking Hasbro in the eye. Oh, he's so fly, a groovy guy with a beard that just won't stop. When the bots get rough, he's super tough as third party cleans up. Rohan's Corner, Super Transformers guy. Rohan's Corner, poking Hasbro in the eye. Hello everyone and welcome back once again to the corner of Rohan. And as you probably know, Rohan's Corner is a pre-recorded show. So, obviously in the week, usually on a Thursday, I'll try and pre-record Rohan's Corner ready for you guys to enjoy on Friday night. However, sometimes things botch that up, primarily being work, or sometimes it can be a sneaky late delivery. And in that case, this is what we have this week. We've got the through the generations review of pangu toys omega supreme who's just come in about 10 minutes ago at like two o'clock on a friday have i got enough time to review this bad boy let's find out shall we all right so as usual starting off with the box and as you can see it's a hefty one it's pretty heavy too uh, we've got tape on the side and tape on the other side this box is pretty much black all the way around nothing on it anywhere except for the pangu toys miracle god and logo ages 16 plus so let's open him up and get him out <clears throat> and there we have it folks the back end of omega supreme there is package i can see half of the blast effects have already come off here we have the lovely color printed nice glossy paper Instruction booklet, not particularly well folded, but you know, uh, there's nothing else in the box whatsoever. And so let's get on and look at the bits and pieces. I'll just take these uh, blast effects out of the way. And uh, the additional face plate here. And we'll get Mr. Pangu out. Clamshell is nice, not taped anywhere. There's one arm. There's the second arm. Oops. And there's the rest. Miracle God here. And here's his tracks. A lot of complaints about these being slightly too big, but anyway. <clears throat> and his Doc Bot, his little buddy from The Secret of Omega Supreme, which uh, Mech Fans Toys also did a version of, but he was available separately from the bot itself. I quite like Dotbot. I'm glad they've included him. He's nicely detailed. He is different from the one that came with MechFans Toys. Um, not perfect, as you can see, there's a bit of gappage in his knee there. Um, but overall, he's a nice little thing that will go on my display, which I like to have these little companion characters, one-offs, as you know. In terms of the fists or the hands or the forearms, they're quite nice. The plastic quality feels decent. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels solid. It's got the ability to move the claw, which a lot of people were worried about. It doesn't have lots of articulation. You can see here the screw holes to bind the two pieces together of each of the claws. And it just has that ability to move here. That's all. The other hand has got working light and sound effects. Kind of sounds like Omega Supreme, but obviously is in Japanese or Chinese, so it doesn't really um, sound like him in that case. And you can probably see the blast effects are not particularly great quality. You can see some flaking on both my large one and my small one here. And you can combine all three parts together to give you that. Of course, all the instructions are in Chinese. However, it is still possible to look at the pictures to understand what to do. Time for a trusty spudger tool. So I managed to push these pieces down. We can see that there's a little ridge here. We just slide this into the arm piece here. Okay, so we just take this piece here and slide the ridge inside the slots. And we've got one arm there. 
I find it easier if you twist the arm up this way and give yourself a little bit of space. And there we have it. Right, next to attach the rams, we turn them around, lift up the backpack, and we take a ramp and take the two little pegs here and just attach them in to the right side. So useful if I got the right ramp. Yeah, looks like they can both go on both. Two in there, two in there, close up the backpack. And there we have Omega Supreme in robot mode. Wonderful. And I absolutely adore his robot mode here from Pangu Toys. I think it actually looks better than the New Age, specifically around the chest area here, this red highlighted area, and this area here. The proportions look really good on him, and the detailing matches up with the cartoon nicely, pretty much everywhere. The only thing I would suggest is that the arms are a little bit short, and obviously the tracks, a lot of people don't like the fact that the tracks are so elongated and wide and would have preferred if they collapsed down a little bit further turning him around we can see he's quite clean all the way up the side lots of detail on him little molded areas little grooved areas which is a nice touch from pangu all the way around some nice paint application in these silver and gray areas here obviously the majority of the base color is there as you can see in yellow and in gray around the back here we have a nice little highlighted red area the head obviously has his red and a nicely painted backpack there overall he looks a stunning little Omega Supreme for the price point I think he's really good quick close-up of the head sculpt there we go this is his normal face obviously lift up his visor it pops off if you need to and here's his alternative shouty face which i think i'm going to keep shouty face on to be honest with you and posability wise it's not bad for such a large lummox the joints are nice and tight and get added bonuses like these little hinge joints on the knees which are quite cool of course as you'd probably expect he's a little bit on the large size to fit into my display but at least he will scale reasonably well with some of the bots. Right now, as you know, I normally like to compare one of these guys against lots of their generations through the generations comparison type figures. So compare them against other variants of themselves. Unfortunately, in this case, I only have the two. Wolf of Tron Siege, as you see there, massive guy on the left hand side and Pangu. And that's because my Generation 1 Omega Supreme is actually a reissue and is still mint in sealed box. So he's not coming out anytime soon. And the only other Omega Supreme I had was Mechfan's Toys Omega, who I sold to make space for this guy. So unfortunately, that's it. He comes up to about, if you include the tracks, he comes up to about the waist midway up Omega, Wolf of Cybertron Omega. Right, and so here's the money shot up against other combiners in the legend scale that I have. The Zeta Toys uh, Superior on there is a little bit shorter. Kind of works as to, you know, when we first saw uh, Omega helping out Superion in Key to Vector Sigma. Devastator rocks in slightly taller, which kind of works for me as well, actually. I like that. He's probably about a few centimeters taller than Magic Square's Menasaur, and I've got Toy World Infinitor there on the end, Fortress Maximus, just for comparison, because I know some people like to use him as their legend scale Fort Max at the moment, because obviously there's nothing else out there on the market. Okay, and in terms of other robot mode comparisons, I have the Mechfans Toys Legend Scale Generation 2 Devastator at the back there, who's quite a lot smaller. I've got a Voyager Bulkhead from the Legacy line, a Masterpiece Fans Toys Hunk or Brawn on the right hand side there. Along the front I've got some Legends figures, Papa Toys Hot Rod, New Age's Grimlock who's about the same size as Mech, uh, Magic Square's Ultra Magnus there and they kind of scale up into about just under half the height of Mighty God. Uh, I've got Iron Tin, Hot Soldiers, Iron Hide, and Magic Square's Wind Charger. And right down the front, we've got Magic Square's Frenzy 
alongside the X Transbots, Mini Perceptor, and Carly. And of course, like in Wardon, you can disengage his forearms and create the rocket ship, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it is kind of puny in comparison to the mighty Miracle God. So yeah, and even if I put it next to a Legends class figure, obviously it looks pretty tiny. Uh, so that doesn't really work. However, if I pull over Docbot, does he scale? Nah, not really. I think you've got to use something really tiny. And this is where I feel these little mini XTB figures and little human mini Legends class figures that have been made on the third party market fit in really well to display with him in rocket base mode. And so a mid transformation here, but I just thought I'd show you, it's quite funny, that scene in Keto Vector Sigma part two, I think it is, where uh, Omega's body is all in parts and he's being rebuilt by Ratchet and Wheeljack and Sparkplug. And you can kind of recreate that with just his torso here, which is quite funny. All right, and here we go, final product time. This is the alternate mode of Omega Supreme and you can see his rocket ship here you can see his base here attached to the track and his tank which is pretty huge and does not attach in any way shape or form to the track does not really ride over the track particularly well but you know it fits in with the aesthetic and it's there and the transformation is quite ingenious in some ways especially where you're flipping out the feet to create these extensions here that connect to the track and also on the tank itself and also on the way in which the actual base mode falls down which is quite cool however i still have the same old concern that i mentioned before which is all about the size of the rocket ship in comparison with the hull's aesthetic especially when you compare it with the size of the tank the tank is far too big and the rocket ship is far too small in my opinion the proportions are wrong especially for a legend scale figure if we bring in a legend scale car let's just bring in new ages outback for example here in comparison he is absolutely tiny compared to the tank i mean we didn't see much of the tank in the tune so i don't know how you feel about that but he's also not that small compared to the rocket ship so yeah once again i really like the fact that we've got this opening patch here to allow you to display mini figures preparing to launch into omega supreme that is excellent right now normally at this stage i would usually include the alternate mode of the other through the generations figures of variants of omega supreme to show you how he scales up in alt mode compared to them what i might do right at the end is show you the rocket ship but the rest of it i'm not going to show you because there's no point in showcasing the entire track base because it just doesn't fit however what i would say is you can see here i've got hot soldiers ratchet sitting next to the tank it's a bit small in comparison i've got magic squares gears here driving along the track and he fits all right actually i've got the micro master countdown who came with the wolf of cybertron and a supreme and he fits in quite nicely dog bot seems to scale in nicely and over here these are the ones that i actually recommend the most to go with this set generation one micro masters they seem to fit in really well in terms of scale at the back here i've got kingdom warpath who's too big i've got skyfire or jetfire Ma magic squares one who again look at that is massive compared to the rocket ship he's just too big so he just doesn't scale in terms of the alt mode but if you've got really minifigures and you really want to make a display set then it can be done okay and because i said i would and because i could there you go there's the comparison between the two rocket ship modes right so final thoughts then on pangu toys pt02 mighty miracle god omega supreme well he costs around about 78 79 dollars so not bad value and we don't know what the price of the new age is yet he is significantly better in my humble opinion than the mech fans toys equivalent which is a fun toy it's easy to play around with and transform and do all the rest with it has the same underlying issues as this figure does with the alt mode and the stubbiness of that rocket ship what i would say about miracle god pangu toys though is the bot mode is absolutely perfect in my opinion it looks brilliant and to be honest with you 90 percent of the time he's going to stay that way uh, when new age do get their figure out it has got the extension on the rocket 
potentially, depending on the price point, and if they do a non-mechanical driven one, then I might go for that for the alt mode. But for now, this is the de facto Omega Supreme in my collection, even better than the Siege one, just from a G1 tune aesthetic. He is better, although the Siege one is fun. So that's been Rohan for another week. But just before I hand you back to the studio, let's continue on Dinobot War. Last episode we got to was moving on from page three, and the majority of you have voted to tell the guard that your father is a Disney executive and is supervising the new attraction. Turn to page 12. Well, on page 12, he looks doubtful. But finally he says, can't do any harm to check. He takes the radio from his belt. Your heart sinks. It will not take him long to find out that you are lying and you will probably be thrown out of Disneyland. Just as he's speaking into the radio, however, an elderly woman comes striding over to the barrier. What is this, young man? She demands as she waves her umbrella in the guard's face. You're a bit big to be picking on children, aren't you? While the confused guard tries to explain to her, you slip away and head towards the new attraction, the Wizard's Cave. Turn to page 10. You decide to take a look at the Wizard's Cave instead. You enter a tunnel strung with spotlights. Sturdy wooden posts hold up the roof and the walls, and the Wizard's Cave is due to open in only a few weeks. And yet there is no sign of the bustling activity that you would expect. Why has work stopped? You hear voices ahead and tiptoe towards them. Turn to page 13. Reaching the end of the tunnel, you look out across a floodlit chamber. A few workmen and security guards are standing by, while five men in suits talk intently. Your gaze travels around the chamber. You see plans and chalked guidelines for the layout of Wizard's Cave, but it seems that work has been stopped. The five suited men are obviously in charge here. One of them, a thin man wearing thick spectacles, is holding a curious device that looks like a very heavy rifle. He's talking to the others about it. And if you are strain your ears, you can just about catch what they're saying. If you wish to listen to what they're saying, please comment. Turn to page 14. If you wish to creep past them instead and investigate the rest of the chamber, please comment turn to page 16. Thank you for joining me here on Rohan's Corner. I hope you've enjoyed this Through the Generations review of Mighty, whatever his name is, Pangu Toys Omega Supreme. I hope to catch you again next week on Rohan's Corner. Back to the studio. Transformers, Rohan's in disguise.